This is Unit Eight, Lecture Two, the last lecture of Unit Eight or Genetics. And in this lecture, we intend to talk about uh, Mendelian genetics. In the Mendelian genetics part, we are going to talk about uh, all the different Mendelian law and their flaws. Non-Mendelian genetics. The most important part of all here is the non-Mendelian genetics. Talk about all the different non-Mendelian ratio and and concepts like epistasis, okay, polygenic inheritance, etc. Then we'll talk about the human genetics, diseases associated uh, with human. Uh, their their type means autosomal or X-linked dominant or recessive type of disease. And then finally, we'll also try to figure out how to solve pedigree problems, uh, which is a representation of family history and the disease carrying process that we will also study. And then finally, we'll solve math problems from uh, this genetics part, including the non-Mendelian genetics, including the pedigree analytics problems, all this type. So let's begin with it. Uh, in the Mendelian and non-Mendelian part, like in the human genetics, we are talking about the idea of transferring gene from the parent to the daughter, parent to the son, things like that. So it's a vertical mode of gene transfer. So when the idea of vertical mode of gene transfer comes, it's always from the parents to the offspring. Now this transfer of the genes uh, follow Mendel's law sometimes. They sometimes do not follow Mendel's law. So what Mendel observed is with a series of experiments conducted in pea plants, he concluded two important ideas. We call them laws of Mendel and uh, we call it uh, the law of uh, segregation or principle of segregation and the principle of independent assortment. So the first one, the principle of segregation states uh, that two alleles segregate randomly during the formation of gametes. Because, you know, when we talk about uh, transferring a gene from the from the parent to the offspring, the, what is the mode of this transfer? The mode is normally we have the somatic cell with two n number of chromosomes. And when we are uh, trying to mate, that means we are trying to transfer the genetic content to the next, next offspring, we are going to prepare gametes. So the gametes are haploid. They are in, uh, they have the n number of chromosomes in their hands. So uh, this gametes, they have the half or the half of this total number of chromosomes that is present. So in this case, the two alleles segregate randomly during the formation of gametes. So while the gametes start forming, those alleles are segregated from one another. So the chances are that they will receive one or the other gamete is 50%. So 50-50 chance of receiving either of these gametes. Now, uh, second idea is independent assortment. The law of independent assortment states that the two genes will assort independently and randomly from each other. Now, this idea of independent assortment depends on uh, if we have uh, more than two different characters to deal with. So if you have only one character to think about uh, and for that one particular trait, we have one gene regulating that trait. So we have two alleles for that. So two alleles, uh, so you can say that segregate randomly uh, for forming gamut. But in independent assortment, two genes will assort independently. That means normally, let's say uh, we are talking about the height of, of the tree and there are two separate alleles, tall and short. The chances are that the tall alley will move to the gamete or the short alley to the move to the gamete is 50-50 according to the principle of segregation. So it's a chance factor, 50% like a coin flip. While the independent assortment idea states that a plant's height, tall and short, and the flower's color, uh, red and white. So it says that if these two different traits are considered and during the time of the uh, gamete formation, uh, one of this feature like the height of the tree will not influence the color of the flower that means it's not like a red flower containing tree will always be tall or a white flower containing tree will always be short something like that because they will assort independently the height uh, alleles will not influence uh, the color flower colored alleles that is known as the independent assortment rule or principle of independent assortment so generally principle of independent assortment requires two different characteristics to deal with but segregation is only one particular characteristic to talk about. Now, in this uh, chapter for CSI net perspective, we mostly uh, are interested to talk about non-Mendelian terms of inheritance. Now, what do we mean by that? So, we think about it. Uh, there are many different phenomena in our, like, uh, generally, uh, 
theoretically, which Mendel con concluded with a series of experiments, follow the Mendel's law. And once they follow the Mendel's law, they follow the ratio of Mendel. Mendel derived the ratio of different genotype and phenotype containing organisms. Okay, genotype is the genetic makeup. The the, the type of genotype contains three different uh, layers, like uh, both of the dominant alleles homozygous dominant, both recessive allele homozygous recessive, and one dominant allele, one recessive allele is heterozygous. Now the thing is, these three different variations have a ratio. For a monohybrid cross, the genotype ratio is one is to two is to one, and for a uh, say as well as the phenotype ratio is 3 is to 1, okay, so 3 tall, 1 short, things like that. Now, for a dihybrid cross, the ratio is changed, especially if you look at the phenotype ratio for a dihybrid cross involving two separate characteristics, the ratio of phenotype is 9, 3, 3, 1. Now, any of the phenomena, any of the uh, formation of alleles or any of the behaviors that we can see, any of the phenotype that we can visualize in this earth, uh, they can follow this ratio of 9331. So if they follow this ratio, then we call those characters as a Mendel's, uh, they are obeying the Mendel's law. So Mendelian ratio followed an obeyed law. So those uh, situations are known as Mendelian inheritance. So any other inheritance pattern that follow that ratio of 9331 is known as Mendelian inheritance. But there are many other inheritance modes which do not follow that Mendelian ratio of 9331, we call them non-Mendelian inheritance. So non-Mendelian inheritance means they will not follow the Mendel's ratio. So they have altered phenotypic ratio. So there are two different types of uh, this non-Mendelian inheritance pattern. One is genotypic ratios follow Mendel's law, but phenotypes do not show uh, that ratio. So the ratio is altered from 9331 to something like 9 is to 7, 13 is to 3, 15 is to 1, uh, ratios like that. It's altered. So, but they follow the Mendel's law, kind of genotypes are following the Mendel's law. So the genotypic ratio for those cases remain constant, but the phenotypic ratio is changed. And the second uh, type of complication where the Mendel's law do not apply at all, example for such is linkage, linkage disequilibrium as well as cytoplasmic inheritance which never even follows the Mendelian inheritance pattern. So we'll talk about both uh, in this chapter in details. So let's begin with the type 1, uh, where we talk about the different laws in effect, all the different laws where the genotype ratio is followed, but the Mendelian phenotype ratio is not followed. Example, lethal genotype, uh, then allelic heterogeneity, also known as multiple allele, uh, then incomplete dominance, uh, epistasis, penetrance, expressivity, pleiotropy, phenocopies, and genetic heterogeneity or polygenic inheritance. And also there is co-dominance link. So there's nine to ten different types of situations we'll talk about now. In all these different phenomena, they are not going to follow the Mendel's phenotype ratio of 9331. That will be altered. And you'll see uh, in epistasis particularly, that ratio of 9331, how it gets altered due to different modifications in the behavior of the organism. We can check that out with this epistasis even in more details. So let's begin with uh, all these series of modifications. So the first one is lethal genotypes. Lethal means death, right? It causes death. So if a certain genotype causes death to that organism, is known as a lethal genotype. Every genotype causes death if you wait long enough. That's, that's kind of a logical explanation. But uh, because you normally per, uh, an organism should die, but lethal genotype is something which even uh, die before birth or things like that. So generally in lethal gene they die before birth, uh, they cause miscarriage like that. So in this case what we think about, let's say there are these this two separate versions of the gene. So capital H dominant form of the allele, small h recessive allele. And uh, if you look at the chart we have capital H, capital H, capital H, small h capital H, small h, and small h, small h. So think about it. It says that lethal genes are generally recessive in nature. So they will express themselves once they are present in homozygous recessive form. That means when they are present, both of them are in small letters. So it is h, h, small h, small h is the recessive lethal. So this is the lethal gene. So this organism will not survive. They will not even born due to this lethality of the gene. So usually, uh, the phenotype ratio in this case, a monohybrid cross the ratio is 3 is to 1, remember. So 3 
all of them with a single, even single capital H will have this normal height and, and this one is lethal. So the ratio should be 3 is to 1. But in this case, instead the ratio is converted to all of them which are living with, they carry the dominant phenotype. Okay, because there is no lethal, like there is no recessive phenotype having organism there because uh, the one with the recessive uh, feature, uh, recessive traits are gone, they are dead. So 100% are of dominant trait. Okay, that is uh, the lethal genotype. Expect the ratio, uh, we expect to see a ratio of 3 to 1 as per Mendel's ratio of phenotype for mono hybrid cross. Instead, we see 100% dominant 